Welcome to the session on the Data Vault Automation Matrix. Now, to give you some quick background of what we're discussing here, Data Vault is being utilized all over the world. There are a lot of different people working with Vault. And as it turns out, because the Vault has very uh, deliberate and purpose built structures, and because things are separated into very unique categories, the Hub Link and SAT, it actually lends itself well to forms of automation. And for this reason, there are several, and, and actually very, very uh, many, different approaches out there for automating, from templates to actual software that generates code uh, to things that help you to understand your models and, and such. Uh, there's, a, there's a variety. So the matrix was put together here to give us an idea of how do these things relate to each other? What am I looking for? For example, if I'm looking for some form of automation uh, tool or, or assistance or template, how can I define what it is I'm looking for? And how can I also not just define it, but find the people that do what I need done or find the tools or the, or the um, approaches or the templates that I can use that will help me with my situation. So from here, you can look at uh, the fact that we have this, uh, this broader matrix approach. And on the left side of our matrix, we deal with things like uh, tools, techniques, features, what features do we have? And on the right side, we map it against functions, right? So we kind of look at uh, templates, for example, that can be used for ETL. We might look at support that could be useful for um, data modeling. We might look at things that can generate code, like code generators, but for things like mappings, generate the mappings for us. We might also have things that help us to automate, say, for example, testing. But by pairing this kind of left side uh, for the features and right side for the functions, it gives us a little bit of an idea of, of where tools fit. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look here, you're going to see here's a uh, matrix form. Okay? Now the matrix form is effectively a, um, uh, designed to be like a form that you would fill out, both from the perspective of saying, this is what my requirements are for my uh, business. I'm looking for automation help in this area. Likewise, this form would be used to create a snapshot of a vendor consulting offering of something that's available for download, whatever the situation is. It gives you an idea of where, where this fits together. So this is the, the, the matrix itself. Now in the header section of this matrix, we capture the name, some notes, and the date of, of what we're looking for here. And then we have a general category. And it's a very quick, high-level category of, is this a, a tool or application? Is this some form of a methodology that helps us to do what we need to do? Or is this some kind of a framework? So is it a software tool, application, and even template? Now, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be an executable file. It could be a template we use uh, that we can apply with, say, Informatica or Oracle or something like that. A uh, methodology might be a uh, project management approach, a program approach, uh, so an approach to governance or structure. Uh, it, and of course, in project management, it would include, uh, for example, applications of agile techniques that we might want to use uh, for, for these purposes. Or is it a framework, an overall comprehensive end-to-end -end way of helping us understand how to, how to go through this? So that's a high-level view we start with. From there, we get into these concepts of features and functions, right? So we can and we, we use basically classification criteria here. What we're saying is, is if you look across here, for example, do you have something that uh, for my design phase, right? For my design phase, I want something that supports and helps me to organize my design phase. So that, that might be uh, you fill in these two blocks here. Likewise, you might have something else that says, I want something that can uh, uh, help support structure and provide me even templates for data modeling, for example. So that might be another category you can fill into the matrix. This is what I'm looking for. And if you look at something like mappings, you might have a th something that says, I actually want something that can help me to automate and generate mappings, something that's actually going to do this for me. Okay, and then we go on from there. But you get the idea. Now, can you make some modifications to the matrix for other criteria that are important to you? And of course you can. Uh, one of the benefits, however, of, standing, of staying 
with a standard matrix that we'll uh, be working on publishing so you'll have this available to you. But the idea of using a standard is that when you have a dozen, two dozen tools and, and offerings already mapped against the matrix, then of course it'll be uh, easy communication. It's, it's more or less like our own master data uh, for the way we can understand how to work with automation tools. Okay, so uh, kind of a bigger picture here uh, so we can get a better feel. Um, if you look down the side then, scoping, requirements, analysis, design, visualization of any part of the process, certainly. Information modeling, uh, reference models, taxonomies, things of that nature. Uh, we have, of course, uh, data modeling, uh, creating the databases themselves, uh, semantic alignment, things that have to do with uh, mapping uh, semantic meaning, uh, mappings uh, themselves, uh, integration work, uh, transform rules and logic, uh, profiling and data quality help potentially in the project, uh, building the ETL and the ELT, uh, automation and templates for testing to make this process faster, metadata and documentation. And then on, on the uh, top here, you can see uh, what does it do with regard to this function? Well, does it help me to, to manage it? Does it support the process? Does it provide structure? Does it organize this so it's easier to work with? Does it automate it? Does it generate something? Is it a template? Does it provide a template? Uh, is there a pattern that's being provided that we can work with? Are there documents here? And is there also, um, does it work on a testing perspective for any one of these categories? That's what we have in there today. Now, on the bottom side, we also have another uh, component here that says we're going to consider the scope of what these tools and techniques support and the value proposition and to some degree also what kind of a data warehousing BI program we're working with. You know, so there's a big difference between having a uh, true enterprise-wide uh, uh, warehouse for a large organization and having ODS for a small organization. The, the scope is very different. So if we look at this one here, you can see, does this thing deal with data and data models? Or does it deal with meaning and semantics? In other words, is it dealing with the physical side of, of modeling data vaults and, and warehouses? Or is it dealing with the business side, more or less, of the um, taxonomy, the meaning, the reference, uh, what is being, what's happening here from a semantic perspective. Likewise, what are the primary values or uses? Uh, is it for process improvement? Is it for code generation? Are you doing this really for prototyping? Is that what the purpose of this is? Uh, is this for design automation? Is it for documentation? Or is it, and I hope most of them are, is it for data warehousing agility? Also, what kind of a program type do we have? Is this a large-scale enterprise data warehouse, or is it an enterprise warehouse for small to medium business? Uh, that makes a difference for, for a lot of these things we do. Uh, is this an ODS, an operational data store? And, and let's remember that today, most of all data warehouses that are designated as a data warehouse are probably, in fact, an ODS. They have a partial scope, and they don't historize fully and, and such like that. But if that's my scope, I should know that. Is this being done primarily for, for support of producing data marts, um, data integration, analytical applications? What are, what are the things we're working on here? And then also overall approach. Is this a data-driven approach, source-driven? And of course, as we know, if we're doing an enterprise warehouse based on Vault, we, we don't want to be source-driven or source-centric. We want to be model or requirements-driven from a broader perspective. However, there are many other project types here. So if our project type is something that is data-driven or source-driven, here's where we can make that note. Is it model-driven from uh, a broader semantic model or, or a business model or information model? Is it requirement-centric? Is it, a, uh, for example, a response to a Basel uh, reporting requirement that we're working with here? In that case, it's a, it's a requirements-driven. And then is it uh, semantics-driven from a reference perspective, reference model? Or, and, and or is it enterprise-centric? Is this now really something that has to do with central enterprise uh, meaning? Those are all things that are part of the matrix. So now you get the idea that if you um, use this from the two levels, one as identifying the thing you're currently looking for and your situation, and then also to review and analyze uh, tools from maybe even a checklist perspective. This can be a really great way to, for example, 
uh, produce an RFI or an RFP that has a uh, designation of what are the feature sets or the scope or the types of tools that you're looking for. So that when those things come in, you can say effectively like you would with an RFP, do you have this feature? Do you support this? Is this a good fit for the thing that I'm looking to do? Uh, that's all we have for this section, so we'll see you at the next one. Thanks.